All right, hi everybody. I should have set this up first before I started recording this. There we go. All right. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Um, I've pretty much upset a few people this week already. I think everyone's kind of upset, right? So uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm going to go through. So here's what I decided to do today for fun. Uh, I got a bunch of bands left, and let's uh, reiterate up front, these are bands that are very important to me. I love these bands. That's why I saved these for last. So these are the last ones. Um, but I'm going to go through some of the ones, some of the most iconic bands there are, their entire discography. And just to make it interesting, rather than me going, hey, here's this one, this one, this one, I just order them in, in my personal preference. I'm going to say this at the outset. I look at these as albums as a whole, uh, and I have my own personal taste, my own age. These bands both existed before I was born, um, so my view is going to be different than everybody else's, and I never mean any kind of disrespect. But no, nobody be all happy with me because I know already that some of my choices are really going to upset some hardcore fans because a lot of people take music very seriously, just like I do. And if you're watching this, you definitely take music seriously, or why else would you be watching this? So please, nobody be offended. It's just my view, the music that spoke to me. I want to love every album equally, but it's not possible. But that's what makes music interesting, right? So, also, it just occurred to me today that I can time these to see how long I'm going. So, there we go. 3.20 is when I started. So, I try not to go too long. So, let us begin with the Beatles. Uh, I am going to just go through my the Beatles records, and I'm going to go from my least favorite to my most favorite. I'll try not to ramble about them, because what can I possibly say about the Beatles that... It hasn't already been said about the Beatles. Nothing, right? So, again, the whole point of this in the beginning was to show just showing my records, which is stupid anyway. So, that's I don't know why I would do that. but <clears throat> So, here we go. We're going to go with the Beatles today, and then I'll move on. And I got a couple other album uh, artists if we get that far. I'm not sure we're going to get that far. We'll see. All right, Beatles. Least favorite Beatles record to most favorite Beatles record. Uh, how many are there? It's 14, right? That's four. No, that's not right. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't even know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go, 12. Unless you count a bunch of this other random crap that they put out. But as far as I know, there's 12 records. I have friends that will correct me on that. So, my least favorite better, number 12. Let's do it that way. Number 12. Please please me by the Beatles. Uh, it's their first. I like that it's their first, but it's very hit and miss. A lot of covers on it. Um, and, you know, they're just finding their footing. But, of course, I saw her standing there and twist and shout iconic. But overall, you know. It's their first record. So 12, please please me. 11, Beatles for Sale. Again, all these records have iconic songs on them. They all have something to give, but you know, you're just, uh, something, but um, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, I love uh, I'll Follow the Sun. Love I'll Follow the Sun. Eight Days a Week is cool. I Don't Want to Spoil the Party is a great song that no people don't know. But other than that, it's kind of not great. Again, a lot of covers. We got rock and roll music and Kansas City and Words of Love. You know, why don't, we don't need that. So number 11, is Beatles for Sale. Number 10, with the Beatles. Uh, I gotta clean these up, by the way. My last records are the ones I haven't gotten around to cleaning up and you know giving respect to and replacing some of the cases, so forgive me. These are old. Uh, number 10 is with the Beatles. Um, I love, uh, again, about a, a lot of covers on here. I love Hold Me Tight. Hold Me Tight is cool. Actually, there's not a, there's not a maybe I should have. Well, we're gonna stick with my order. My order always changes, by the way. In a year, I'll put these in a different order. Uh, there you go, number 10. Uh, with the Beatles. Now here's where I'm going to upset some people. Number nine, Let It Be. I don't, this is very hit and miss for me. Although there's great songs on here, Let It Be is of course uh, not even, there it is, uh, wonderful. And I love I've Got a Feeling, and Longer Winding Road. Um, but other than that, Across the Universe I like, I Me Mine. I mean, those are good, but there's a lot of stuff on here that I didn't really care for either. So, And again, we're getting to the point where it's the Beatles, all right? So even the ones that are ranked 5, 6, 7 are still going to be great albums, right? So there you go. Uh, number 9, Let It Be. Number 8, Magical Mystery Tour. Um, again, spotty, but good stuff on here. I love The Fool in the Hill. Your Mother Should Know is cool. Hello, Goodbye is a great song. Scarberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, Baby You're a Rich Man. All cool stuff. Don't really care for Blue Jay Way and Flying, but whatever. But there you go. Where are we? I should have written, I should have wrote these in the back, my numbers. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. 8, right? Let's say that's 8. Magical Mystery Tour. 7. Now you're going to get pissed. So now a lot of Beatles fans are going to get mad at me. But I can't help it. It's just how I feel. Number 7. Sgt. Peppers. Um, I know it's iconic. I know it's groundbreaking. And there's a wonderful, wonderful songs on here. But there's also songs on here I don't. 
fixing a hole, the benefit of Mr. Kai within you, without you, lovely Rita, good morning, good morning. I, I, none of that does anything for me. So, although the other songs are brilliant, sorry, um, number seven, Magical Mystery Tour. Right? Yes. Number six, Help. I love Help. Help is a great record. Now we're getting to where it, getting into where the territory where they're almost entirely great albums, just one's greater than the other. But I love, I love, I love the night before. The night before is such a great song. They're telling lies the night before, and they got that, that, that like that minor G chord, and the it's awesome. Um, but of course, Ticket to Ride, you're gonna lose that girl. Help, the song is a great song, and Yesterday is on here. So uh, you go number six, Help. Uh, Great. These are all great. From here on out, they're all great. This is just my sixth favorite. Number five. Again, you're all going to be mad. No, you're not. These are all great that are left. Number five, the White Album. I got the classic version, like the two, like this. The White Album, number five for me. Uh, again, groundbreaking, iconic stuff on here. I'm just going to keep saying the same things. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff on here, and there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense to me. But as a whole, it's really interesting and amazing. There's nothing I'm going to say about the White Album that you would already know about the White Album, or that no one else said about the White Album. Do you want to hear me talk about the White Album? No, you don't. Um, I like Don't Pass Me By, actually. And uh, I Will is a beautiful song. I love I Will. Um, but there's other stuff that's weird. But there you go. Um, I'm not going to ramble on about the White Album, because who wants to hear that? Um, number five, White Album. Number four, Hard Day's Night. I love every song on here. If there's one I don't like. I'm happy just to dance with her. Don't really care for that. And I Love Her is okay. Even though everybody covers on I Love Her. Why does everybody do a cover of And I Love Her? I don't know. It's not bad. I just don't know why that's the... I've, I've heard a lot of covers of And I Love Her. But Tell Me Why. I love Tell Me Why. Tell me why you cry. I, I like... Those are the only songs I don't really like. Is, uh, I'm, I'm happy just to dance with you and I love her. The rest, great stuff on here. I love You Can't Do That. I should be talking more about this since I really am a big fan of the Beatles and I ramble about all sorts of other crap forever and I'm just kind of blowing past the Beatles. It's just because I figure you guys already have your opinion of the Beatles. Who cares what I think? Um, if I Fell has such beautiful harmonies. The harmonies in If I Fell are <laughs> amazing. Uh, anytime at all. I'll cry instead. I love that. When I get home, I got a whole lot of... Oh, great. Can't do that. I'll be back. Cool. That's great. There you go. Um, number four. Um... Hard Day's Night. Love it. Number three. Uh, here's, I mean, these are all just pretty much tied for the top three spots. So don't want anybody to be pissed off, okay? Number three, Abbey Road. Can't say not about Abbey Road. You don't already know out of Abbey Road. I said that really quickly. Uh, mostly it's wonderful. Um, even the stuff that's not good is interesting. I love the harmonies on Because. Um, and just that whole mishmash at the end is iconic and awesome. I don't really dig Polythene Pan or the Sun King. But um, they're just throwing stuff out there, right? Uh, and again, nothing I could say about this record that you don't already know. So I'm just going to say it's my third favorite Beatles record. Um, here comes the sun I always liked. Um, I should have told the story of the Beatles stuff, actually. Should Well, let me get to the, the, the end here, and I'll, I'll tell you my little experience with the Beatles, because I normally do that. There you go, number three, Abbey Road. My number two favorite Beatles record, Revolver. And there's a very tough call between one and two, so... Number two, Revolver. The only thing that kept me, kept this out was I don't like Dr. Robert. Don't really care for Dr. Robert. This whole record is amazing. Of course it is. It's the Beatles. It's Revolver. This is the time period I liked the Beatles, right? Right when they kind of got past covering other people's materials, really found their footing as songwriters, but didn't get into the trippy area yet, you know, where they just kind of started. This is the, the sweet spot for me with the Beatles. Like right before, I think, Sgt. Pepper, right before they kind of got a little trippy when they really... Love this stuff. I love all this. I'm only sleeping. Eleanor Rigby, Yellow Submarine. She said, she said, oh, God, uh, Good Day Sunshine for No One. For No One, I always thought was a beautiful song. For No One's a great McCartney tune. I love that. Got to Get You In My Life. What's that one song? I can't think of a song now. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, Revolver, number two favorite Beatles record. Again, what am I going to say you haven't heard? So there you go. Anybody know which one's left? I'll give you 10 seconds. Which one is the one that's left? What's my number one? Someone's got to know. Maybe not. There's only 11 people watching. Um, what's the Beatles record I haven't talked about yet? No? It's all right. All right. My favorite Beatles record. Revolver. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, excuse me, rubber sole. Ha! That was great. All the all the all the build up, and I said the wrong title. <laughs> title. <laughs> oh God, sorry. Uh, rubber sole, man. Rubber sole. Every song, every song, straight through. Fourteen songs. Love them all. This is my favorite Beatles record. This is right the pinnacle of what they are to me, anyway. And I love all the stuff. I'm just saying, this is my favorite one. Solid, solid, everything about it. I love every song. Drive My Car, Great Harmonies, Norwegian Wood, You Won't See Me, You Won't See Me, Think For Yourself, The Word, you know, we got Harrison in here contributing some good songs, What Goes On, Michelle, Girl, I'm Looking Through You, it's so cool in my life, well, this whole, the whole record, this whole record, this is my favorite, Rubber Soul, best Beatles record in my opinion, um, so there you go, that's my, that's my Beatles ranking, I know that everyone's, not only, everyone is going to agree with me, please don't be upset, it's just the way I feel, how I how I took to the, the Beatles records. Love them all. Rubber Soul is my favorite. They got other stuff, right? Since they're showing my records, but it's just like this one-off of like Day Tripper, We Can Work It Out, Paperback Rider, Rain, Hey Jude. I don't even know what this is. Like, Don't Let Me Down. It's other Beatles songs, but Let It Be is on here and Across the Universe. I don't know what this is. It's just, is this other songs that just didn't make records? I'm not as much of a Beatles head as I should be, but I got this. And then I got Let It Be Naked. And then that whole anthology they did like 20 years ago with all these discs. I got all these, but this is, and this is interesting stuff on here also. Um, but I don't really count them as studio records. Beatles, I didn't have any Beatles records till I was like early 20s. Like I, I remember my dad called me because uh, as somebody that he worked with um, had a bunch of Beatles albums he was trying to sell. He had Beatles CDs he brought in. My dad called me. He goes, you want any Beatles records? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. I, and I think I asked dad, like, do I want them? He's like, yeah, you do. Like, I didn't have any. So my first Beatles records, I didn't get them all at once. I think were, like, the Rubber Soul. I'm almost positive Rubber Soul was one of the first ones they had in Revolver. Um, but I got them from a guy my dad worked with at uh, Concrete Plant. He doesn't probably remember that. Um, but, yeah, I didn't get into them until my early 20s. I should have, but, you know. And then, of course, you listen to that, and uh, you understand that everything I ever loved stands on the shoulders of the Beatles. Pretty much, right? Doesn't pretty much everything stand on the shoulders of the Beatles? And in my world, the Beatles, Zeppelin, and... Sabbath, I guess, and The Who. Aren't those the four? In my world, they are, but I know that we all have our own opinions. So, that was, oh God, that was 12 minutes about the Beatles. How am I going to do this? I might only get through Beatles and Kiss. I have two other bands laid out, but there's no way I'm going to talk about that one. I'll spend 15 minutes talking about that band, so let's just move on. Uh, all right, here's my Kiss records. Uh, I'm going to really, and I know, I just like the Beatles, Kiss. Kiss fans take it very, very seriously. Please don't be upset with me. And before we go into this, I want to remind everybody that I am a kind of a kid of the 80s, and I like the more polished sound, the more succinct songwriting, and the more harmony-based songs. And Kiss, a lot of times, just because of the time that they were, they, they hit a lot of the records, it was just understood that there was a lot of filler in some of the older 70s records. So you had two or three good songs, and then five songs that were kind of, eh, you know, and so there are songs, there are records on here that meant a lot to people, that I that didn't connect with me. Please don't be mad. Okay, here's my beetle. Here, here's my kiss ranking just for me. Okay, I'm gonna start by saying this. I've never. I haven't listened to any of these. I actually just got the solo records this year. I haven't listened to any of these, so I have to. I can't factor these in. Um, I will listen to these someday. I haven't gotten to it. Um, and I was late comer to kiss. By the way, I was very late comer to kiss. Uh, I know they've always been around, but I really didn't digest Kiss until nine, ten years ago. You know, I had a couple of the records. I had Out in the Shade because of my age, and I had a, a Destroyer. But I didn't. I, but I really didn't know a lot about Kiss until about mm, seven, eight years ago, and I got every Kiss record, and I tried to go through them in order. Um, so I didn't grow up with a lot of this stuff either, so it doesn't mean as much to me as it will to a lot of you. So don't be mad, all right? Uh, how many records did I have? Crap, I should have done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, 20. 20 records. 20 Kiss records? Jesus. All right, here we go. Number 20. Don't, I'm sorry I haven't listened to the solo stuff. I'll get to it. Just forgive me. Number 20, my least favorite Kiss record by a mile. Carnival Souls. What is this? I listened to this about four years ago for the first time. Hate and Rain were cool. I tried, and please remember, I listen to these records 10, 12, 20 times. I want to love everything. I give everything a fair shot. I really do. Some things connect, some things don't. Didn't care for this one bit. 
don't get it. I think it was just a bid to be relevant in the 90s. That's how it felt. Didn't like any of it, really. Sorry. No. Number 20. Number 19. Here's where I'm really going to piss you guys off right from the front. Because, again, a lot of you grew up with these records. They're very important to you. It's like somebody crapping on Slippery When Wet for Me or Slip of the Tongue by Whitesnake. Like, I love that record, but that's because that's when I was born. That's when it, So I understand that you're not going to be happy with this. 19. Hotter Than Hell. Spotty. Spotty for me. Uh, I like Going Blind. And that's it. Didn't care for it. Don't hate me. 19. Hotter Than Hell. 18. Rock and Roll Over. Um, I Want You was cool. Dr. Love I like. Um, and that's kind of it. I remember my parents had this. Because I remember looking at this. Uh, this album cover when I was a kid. It was in my parents' uh, apartment. I remember just staring at it. Just being mesmerized. But I'm sorry. Again, a lot of the records at the time had a lot of filler. Didn't care for it. 18. Rock and Roll Over. 17. Oh, God, you guys are all going to hate me. Dress to Kill, 17, Dress to Kill. Just the room, the ladies in waiting and the room service, the lyrics of it, don't really like it, but it's got rock and roll all night on it, right? Rock and roll all night. How, uh, it's iconic, right? Um, so there's that, and um, I don't know, anything for my baby I kind of liked. You're going to get the sense from this that I'm more of the pop version of Kiss, that I like that kind of music more, I guess. So please don't be mad, it just didn't connect with me. So um, there you go. And twenty. So seventeen. Um, dress to kill. Sorry. Sixteen. <clears throat> I know. I know. Listen. I knew this was gonna happen. Don't be mad at me. All right. I can't help it. You're really gonna hate my top five. <laughs> You're gonna just hate me. You're all gonna unfriend me and curse me for life. Twenty nineteen. Eighteen seventeen. But this is interesting, right? At least it's interesting. Sixteen. Unmasked. Don't care for unmasked. I like this. That you. I like Shandy. Um, I like tomorrow. Um, I, I know that I'm on, that there are people that are di divisive about, um, Ace Frehley's songwriting, but I don't, I don't care for, I don't think there's one Ace Frehley song I like. I'm sorry. Torpedo Girl is just horrid. Um, but there you go. All right. 20, I can't, I can't keep track. So 16, Unmasked. Sorry. This is fun, because I can feel you while getting mad at me. Uh, 15, Music from the Elder. Yes, I prefer Music from the Elder more than the other ones. Uh, this wasn't as bad as everybody says it was. I actually like the atmosphere of a lot of these songs and the fact that they try to do something different. I like the song I. Uh, World of Our Heroes is pretty cool. The Oath is pretty cool. Under the Rose is pretty cool. Odyssey I like. It's not a terrible record, but Scott, Scott Carr, you and I, we're, we're just on different sides Scott and Jerry. I'm sorry. You know I love you guys. Don't be mad. We're just... we're. I knew this was going to happen. Don't be mad at me. Um, yeah, here we go. What is... I cannot keep track. 15. Music from the Elder. 14. Dynasty. Um, in fact, maybe this should have even been lower. Because I'm looking at it right now thinking I don't really, really like, remember any of these songs. Um... 2000 man, God, just so bad. Sorry. Um, Charisma, that's got to be Gene Simmons. Um, Save Your Love, I remember I liked. This should have been lower, even. All right, well, and again, my opinion changes all the time. 14. You guys grew up with this stuff, though, right? You grew up with these records. So I understand how it's deeper in your blood. You probably listen to it a lot more than I have, you know? So, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, uh, Hot in the Shade, 13. Didn't hate this record. I don't hate any of these. Um, but there's, it's so full. It's so full of, uh, it's just bloated almost. But I love Forever. Like that's, I was 14, Forever came out. You know, I love the Power Ballads. You know, Michael Bolton co-wrote it. I'm just a sucker for that kind of stuff. I love Forever. Still do. Uh, Hide Your Heart is cool. Rise to it is good. I love the song uh, Little Caesar. I love the harmonies of Little Caesar. It's super cool. Uh, Little Caesar I like. Um, but then it kind of gets hit and miss, you know, but, um, it's just, I think just a little bit too much. That's all. Um, I, um, yeah, there you go. One, two. How can I not keep track of the videos? 13. Um, hot in the shade. 12. Let the hate continue. Lick it up. 12. I know people love this record. I don't hate it. 
it's just not it's, it doesn't speak to me as much I think it's I think a lot of my friends are more guitar players and I like the more guitar oriented music and it is Kiss after all um, but um, again Lick It Up is good uh, All Hell's Breaking Loose I like I love All Hell's Breaking Loose um, Exciter I love you know uh, Fits Like a Glove is just goofy but fun uh, I just didn't give a, I don't um, it just didn't connect with me a hit and miss again Spotty some great songs and then some songs like wow that's kind of the um, and I, I don't really care for Vinnie Vincent. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't care for his output. I don't, I got two of his solo records and I don't really like those. I know. Please don't be mad. It's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, so 12, lick it up. Here's where you're all going to get mad. If I haven't upset you yet, it's coming. Are you ready? Number 11, revenge. I know. I went back through this before I sat down to do this to make sure I actually felt the way I feel, but I do. Let the, Just let it out, man. Let it out. Let it out. I understand. I love some of these songs. I do. I love Unholy. I love God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Um, I love uh, Spit. I actually really love Spit. I remember the first time I heard Spit. I was like, this is the greatest song ever. The guitar solo on Spit, by the way, is so loud in the mix. It's incredibly loud in the mix. If you listen to the end, when it's really loud. But Spit is a great song. Spit is like almost one of the epitome, like the epitome of Kiss songs. I love Spit. Uh, and I don't like Domino. I don't like Domino. Don't know why. Um, it's not bad. Again, it's not bad. It just didn't resonate with me. Some great songs and some not great songs for me. I Just Want It is cool, but it sounds a lot like Summertime Blues, but I still like it. Um, but... It just didn't connect with me as much as others did. Don't hate it. Don't love it. I know. Let the hate continue. But at least I'm being honest. I'm sorry. You're all going to hate me. Number 10. Uh, I feel it. I just feel the energy. Number 10. Love Gun. Dig Love Gun. I Stole Your Love is awesome. Christine 616 is awesome. Tomorrow and Tonight I Love. Love Gun I Love. Then she kissed me, even though it's a goofy cover. I love that. I love when Paul Simon, uh, Paul Simon, Paul Stanley does that kind of stuff. Hate shock me. Everybody loves shock me. Can't stand shock me. Don't get it. I'm an asshole. I'm really sorry. Listen, somebody. Uh, listen, I'll tell you what. Very soon, I'm gonna do other artists that you can crap on me about. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. It's just me. Ten. Love gun. Nine. Hmm. Asylum. Um. I like any way you slice it, even though it's goofy as can be. Who wants to be lonely? I'm alive uh, uh, all night. Got a great hook. Uh, tears are falling. This is where Desmond Child started to get involved a little bit more, right? And you know me, Desmond Child. That stuff speaks to me. Can't help it. So, 10, Asylum. Number 9. I'm going to regret this later. Oh, not number 9. That was number 9. I'm sorry. See, I knew I was going to lose count. Number eight, excuse me, number eight, number eight. This was nine. Number eight. Monster. Yep, that's right. Number eight is Monster. I like the songs. I like Hell and Hallelujah. I like Wall of Sound. I like Freak. I like Back to the Stone Age. I like Long Way Down. I like Eat Your Heart Out. Eat Your Heart Out is a very throwback 70s with the harmonies. I love The Devil Is Me. I love Last Chance. These are good songs. I like these songs. They're very polished. They're very well produced. And I like it. I I enjoy more of the songs on this record than the others. I'm sorry. I know. Just being honest. Um, number eight is Monster. Sean Pallad is going to watch this and just hate me. Number seven. Destroyer. Yep. Again, I know it's iconic. I know it's a milestone. I stared at this this picture forever when I was a kid. My, my father loves this record. I don't hate it, okay? I don't hate it. I love Detroit Rock City. I love King of the Nighttime World. I love God of Thunder. Um, I like Beth. I like Shout It Out Loud. It's just like Flaming Youth and Sweet Pain and Great Expectations. You know, they didn't do much for me. And when it's only a nine-song record and three of the songs are kind of meh, then it just ends up number seven. It's still number seven. It's still good. It's just number seven. Um, so, there you go. Sorry, number seven. Number six. 
Animal Eyes. Animal Eyes I like because you know me. You know I like the Desmond Child kind of stuff. You know I like the polished 80s with the big hook choruses and the big vocals. So this is going to speak to me more. Uh, I've Had Enough. Heaven's on Fire. Uh, Lonely as the Hunter. Under the Gun. Throw in the Street. All pretty cool. Um, I don't know. So there you go. Uh, Russ, you and I, you're going to hate me, Russ. Um, number six. Animal Eyes. Number five. The hate is coming. The hate is coming. Number five. Sonic Boom. I know, but I like this record. They're all modern day Lyle's cool. Russian Roulette is cool. Never Enough. Yet, Never Enough sounds a lot like um, um, Nothing But A Good Time by Poison, but still. Yes, I Know. Nobody's Perfect. Um, Stand. All For The Glory. Dangerous. I'm An Animal. Say Yeah. All good songs. All good songs. All solid. They all sound like Kiss. I like this record. My my fifth favorite Kiss record. There it is. Number four. So, I've talked a lot about how I love the 80s sound. And you know I love uh, Desmond Child, Diane Warren. And the big hook choruses and the keyboards. So, what do you think my fourth favorite Kiss record is? If you're familiar with Kiss. Yeah. Crazy Nights. This is a great record. This is, to me, the epitome of their 80s output. It's just very polished. I know a lot of the Kiss purists hate this because they think it's fluff. And I totally understand and respect that. I understand. But I love this record. Paul, San no. Paul Simon has never sung higher. Uh, but all these songs are great. Crazy, Well, not all of them. Crazy Nights is awesome. I'll Fight Hell the Whole Use Great. Bang Bang Use Great. No, no, no. Hell or High Water. My Way. Reason to Live is a great song. Great harmonies on uh, Reason to Live uh, going into the chorus. Uh, Turn On the Night. It's pure 80s Diane Warren fluff, but it's friggin' awesome. Uh, Thief of the Night. I like all the songs except for uh, Good Girl Gone Bad, but otherwise, I love this. This is a great record. This is a great record. It just is. Um, if you don't like it, I understand. Please don't hate me for loving it. I love it. Four. Number three. <laughs> Number three is going to upset all of you. But I cannot help it. Psycho Circus. Number three. For me. I know. I feel all of you. But I'm telling you, for me, this album, for whatever reason, connected with me in a very real way. And I just listened to it over and over and over and over. Uh, I got a review I wrote years ago about it. But to me, this record at the time was a good encapsulation of what I thought Kiss was. Uh, Psycho Circus is a great song. Within is kind of trippy and weird, but it's great. Uh, Paul uh, Gene Simmons song. I pledge allegiance to rock and rolls. Paul Simon. God damn it, why do I keep doing that? Paul Stanley singing about the love of rock and roll. And what's more great than that is Paul Stanley singing about rock and roll. Into the Void. Hate it. Ace Fraley. Hate it. We Are One, great layered harmonies and, and uh, melodies at the end. I got another Gene Simmons song, You Wanted the Best. Cool when they all sang a line and great hook on that. Raise Your Glasses, a song about celebration by Paul Stanley. What is better than that? I finally found my way. Little Bow, I'll throw back to Beth, which isn't great, but I like it. Dreaming, dark and trippy and weird, but it's awesome. Journey of a Thousand Years. I like all the songs except for Into the Void. I know. I feel it. I, I don't just, I, you guys can all feel the way you feel. I feel the way I do. Please don't hate me. But for whatever reason, and it's probably because Bruce Fairbairn, uh, Fairbairn, why do you say his name, did the production. It's solid. It's smooth. It's great. I love this album. I know that all the Kiss purists can't stand this and they think it's tripe, but I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I listened to this and I, and I loved it. And Gene Simmons really wrote some of his best stuff on this. If you really look, he actually delivered. He wrote like I think four or five of these songs and normally he's pretty lazy about the writing. So I loved it. I thought it was a great little, it just, it touched on a little bit of everything that I thought Kiss did. Lyrically, musically, there you go. Hate me if you must. There's two left, right? The top two shouldn't be any surprise, but so be it. And this was tough. This was tight. Just like the Beatles. I went back and forth. I just, don't, I don't know why, Russ. I don't hate him as a person. I don't, the songs don't connect with me. They just don't connect with me. I don't not like the songs because they're ace songs. I just don't like the songs and their ace songs. It just works out that way. I don't know why. Number two, the debut. 
And this was tough. I wanted this to be number one. I go back and forth on it, but no. But I love it. Who doesn't love it? Iconic. Every song except for, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to take it back because Cold Gin is a, a Israeli, right? And I like Cold Gin. I like Cold Gin. Um, I love, I think I love all these. Nothing to Lose, Strutter, Firehouse. Let Me Know. Maybe not Let Me Know. I can't even think of how Let Me Know goes. I know how the rest of them go. Um, but I love it. I love it. It's great. It's just it's a moment in time, and it's a band that had nothing, no image to live up to, no last album to compete with. They're just being themselves, and I love it. I listen to it over and over and over again, and I know this will upset some of you. I didn't really dig into it until about seven years ago. I was like 34 and 35 before I really dug into this, and I really loved it. It's over and over and over and over and over again. So, number two, great. Love it. There you go. I get a little credibility back for this, right? Like some of you don't hate me as much now because I love this. Uh, is it Gene? Is Cold Gin Gene? I thought Cold. I thought Gene just sang Cold Gin, but that Ace Frehley wrote it. Yeah, Ace Frehley wrote Cold Gin. Gene just sang it because Ace didn't want to sing. But good catch, Russ. Good catch. Um, which leads us with number one. What's number one, everybody? Yeah, man. Creatures of the Night. Hell yeah. This is my favorite Kiss record. Love it. Again, I didn't dig into... Uh, it's alright if you do. I understand. Um, didn't dig into this stuff until a few years ago, but oh my god. This is this is so, so good. Um, I don't... I don't really like uh, Saint and Sinner. That's the only song I didn't care for, but every other song is just killer. Creatures of the Night, Keep Me Coming, Rock and Roll Hell... Co-written by Brian Adams, right? Rock, rock and Roll Hell. Brian Adams co-wrote Rock and Roll Hell and um, War Machine, I think. Is that right? I think that's right. Let go. Let go. Come on. Oh, you suck so hard. Screw it. Someone will tell me later. Um, but yeah, I, it's a great record because it really it rocks. G, uh, uh, Paul Stanley has rarely sung better. You got a great power ballad and I still love you but it still has the kiss feel and it's not a wussy power ballad song war machine is killer um love it just love it so this is not my number one kiss record there you go so there's my kiss collection there's my beatles collection I have talked for Jesus a half an hour oh my god how did I do that uh yeah right right Alex I just figured that out a month ago that you can just, boom, get them out. 25 years I've been digging them out my fingernails. And I just figured that out. I've ruined some of my CD books because I get frustrated. Like, come on out. And you're just like, oh, there you go. Right out. Oh, my God. I'm so mad at myself. Um, Kiss was always around when I was growing up. My dad is a big Kiss fan. My dad kind of sounds a little bit like Gene Simmons uh, whenever he sings. I can't do it, but my dad can. Um but, uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in St. Louis, and I, I, I guess Kiss was big everywhere. Uh, yeah, Brian Adams and Jim Pellins, right. War Machine, right. That's right. Um, and I love, I love and respect Kiss. I'm not as deep of a fan as everybody else is. Um, just, I just was a little bit too old it just, it, or too young or whatever it is. It missed me. You know, I, I love the bands that stood on the shoulders of Kiss and didn't know it at the time, and now I do. Uh, but there you go. There's my Kiss albums ranked. There's my Beatles albums ranked. I had no idea it was going to take a half an hour. So I guess these are just going to wait for another time. Because I had two more artists that I was going to talk about to try to break up this. But no time. So there you go. There's a half hour of me rambling about two bands. How on earth is that interesting? Um, that's it, I think. Do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. Uh, all right. I'm going to pitch my record real quick. But my album has nothing to do with what I just talked about. Here's my website. There you go. Like that, I wrote it backwards so that it would work on this thing. Um, and um, that's it. I'll be back with more at some point. Maybe later today because I really wanted to talk about these two. Um, that's it. Please don't hate me. Thank you guys for watching. And um, that's all I got, I think, right? We all love music. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.